Imagine paying $300 for a concert from your favorite streamer and expecting it to be a high production event. And then when you all show up, this is all you see. You'd be pretty upset, right? Well, what if I just told you that I just made all of this up and that this concert didn't cost a single penny? It was actually free, and the only money you had to pay was an entrance fee from the convention center that the concert is being hosted at, which turned out to only be $9. And the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because I saw a bunch of goofy happening on Twitter over the past few days. Basically, a lot of blame and misinformation was being spread and being used as ammo to bully this VTuber. Everyone, meet Dakapo, who is a VTuber that's a part of a boy group from the Algorithm Project, which is a Thai VTuber talent agency. This group wants to gather talented VTubers to make really fun music together and spread entertainment around the world through their music. He reached 100,000 subscribers 18 days after his debut, which is an amazing accomplishment. And then before this event, he reached over 200,000 subscribers all on his own. Like, look, I've been a YouTuber for almost three years now, and I still haven't even hit the 100,000 subscriber mark. So for him to do this in only 18 days is incredibly admirable. He was a part of this concert that consisted hundreds of other VTubers at this anime convention, and this concert was free. You only had to pay an entry fee for the entire convention, which was like about $9 USD. And this convention was for like a lot of anime fans, cosplayers, and also VTubers. So you know, this concert is happening, there's like a bunch of other VTubers who did some kind of event. And when it was his turn in the concert, someone posted like a little recorded portion of it, and it blew up on TikTok because from an outsider's perspective when you look at this, which is basically out of context. People thought it was weird that girls were screaming over his model when all he did was like move his hair out of his face. Turns out that this VTuber rarely shows his face on his model, so in his own community, him doing something like this was a really big deal. Kinda like how all of you get really excited whenever you see me in a video. It's that same energy. Basically, people were making fun of him for a convention that cost $9 because they thought that the concert cost $300 because of Thai currency exchanges. And a lot of this caught wind and started a huge trend on TikTok. So now this dude who worked so hard to do something fun for his audience has now become a TikTok meme. You know you've made it big when you've become a TikTok meme. But this whole situation went from like, hee hee, it's kind of silly how the model moves to... I can't believe people are fawning over this floating PNG. That's so cringe. Like when you have non-VTuber fans looking at VTuber content, of course they're going to think it's pretty cringe or just dunk on us simply because we're anime characters. Like the amount of times I have made really good takes on Twitter or on YouTube or whatever to the point where other YouTubers or Twitter people would totally agree with me. They often just look the other way or invalidate it because I'm an anime woman. So no matter how good my opinion is, it doesn't matter because I'm anime and they think anime is cringe, which is fair. So it doesn't surprise me to see non-anime fans dunking on this because this content isn't for them. So of course they're not going to understand it. But what did surprise me was the other groups of people arguing over this on Twitter. Basically, I saw at least three different splits on this situation. There was the crowd of people who are self-aware at the limitations of live 2D VTuber models and were making memes because VTuber movements can be silly. Like this group isn't making fun of DACA or anything like that, but they were just kind of making fun of the fact that, yeah, VTubers look kind of goofy when they move that's what makes us so charming to people. Then there's the group of people who actually had malicious intent and are just spreading misinformation and judging DACA and the whole VTubing scene entirely. And then there was the group of fellow VTubers and other content creators who decided to take this entire drama and make it about themselves. But let's go through each one because I saw a lot of trash being thrown out on Twitter from all of this. Let's start with the first group of people, the self-aware type. There was this VTuber named Kenji who made his own TikTok meme and he posted on Twitter and people were freaking the heck out, assuming that Kenji Kenji was trying to dunk on Daka and trying to bully him, but he was actually just making a joke at the general concept of the limitations of live 2D VTubers since this did become a TikTok trend. And people just thought it was funny how a little bit of movement can make a crowd go wild. Like when you look at Kenji's TikTok, you could see him basically being like, yeah, bro, I'm with you too. I got that one button toggle just for you, man. But people on Twitter did not understand that like at all. And they actually read so far into it that they decided to push Kenji onto the second group of people, thinking that he had this malicious intent and he's a bad sussy baka. And then they used that as ammo to be racist towards him. Like, no, seriously, that's what happened. I have another video talking about this specific instance that you can watch later because it is wild with what happened to Kenji and only Kenji from this whole entire event. Now let's talk about the second group of people who actually did have malicious intent and was just trying to bully Daka because most of these people are just non-VTuber fans. That's right, I'm talking about the Kyles, the Taylors, the weeps who just hate VTubers, and the Hollow Junkies. 
They use this entire situation to continue to dunk on VTubers just because they simply just don't like VTubers. And the reason why I'm including the Hollow Junkies in here as a subcategory is because I saw a lot of Hollow Life fans making fun of DACA because Hollow Life can afford this big and expensive 3D concert with their massive budget and Hatsune Miku's stuff is just so much better. Like, yeah, of course these guys can afford a massive concert like that. They have that kind of budget and backing from their company. This is a Thai talent agency and their currency and budget is way different, as well as their fan base is also really different because the culture of VTubing is just so different over there. Once again, this was a free event and Daka was just trying to do something nice for his fans. I think a lot of people seem to forget that regardless if you're in an agency or not, a lot of the times the creator has to do everything themselves. And when you're doing everything yourself, that means you have to make the best with what you've got. One account that I saw that I don't really know if they belong in group one or group two is uh this account this person isn't a vtuber fan i think they're like an artist or a weeb i don't really know but they thought that this concert costed 300 dollars and they made a tweet joking about the situation this blew up so much that all the non-vtuber fans that i mentioned use that as more ammo to continue to bully daka and then the person who made the tweet had the audacity to use all his hate being fueled by their tweet to promote their art afterwards. Like, it's really weird because, you know, they finally deleted the tweet saying they didn't want to be a part of the drama and continue to spread misinformation. But if you look at their account, you could see them engaging in stuff like this. Kind of makes me wonder if they're only pretending to be in good faith about it because they didn't benefit or gain anything from the situation like they originally thought they would. I personally think it's kind of weird to dogpile on someone, even if you misunderstood the situation, and then suddenly linking your art, asking people to either commission you or go to your Twitch stream. You know, basically trying to monetize off of you spreading misinformation. It's just kind of weird, and I hope they learn their lesson, but with all these quote retweets and how they're responding to people in the comments, who knows? But it just tells me that this person clearly isn't a content creator. They're just an ordinary person trying to get some attention off the internet. It always makes me chuckle when people try to rub their brain cells together to figure out which brownie points they want to try to earn because they only want to comment their opinion on a situation if it'll benefit fit them in some way. Which leads me to my next point, the last category of people dunking on this entire situation. Other VTubers, fellow artists, and content creators that use this as a way to make this entire situation about them. Like there was this one VTuber who decided to do a humble brag by saying that a proper way to do a concert like this is to use a 3D model and this was not well received because after he said that, he then said like, oh, you know, it cost 1.5k to get good VR equipment and that you should be able to afford that and put on a good concert if you have a large fan base. Like literally, he said this. This is how you do a proper VTuber concert. This can be easily translated to an IRL projection as well. I'm not rich. This is about $1,500 in VR tracking equipment. If you have a large enough fan base to put on an IRL concert, you can afford to do this. Just my opinion. Like little bro, they're beating your ass in the quote retweets right now with how bad this take is. $1,500 is a lot of money for people. And not only that, assuming that just because somebody has a large enough fan base, that means that they should be able to afford a better or a more unique experience tells me that you literally have no idea how the real world works. I noticed that there's quite a few different VTubers that either live with their parents or they have a spouse that pays all of their bills, so many of them don't have to pay for anything except for just VTubing, but that's a small minority of VTubers. The rest of us do actually have bills to pay, and sometimes things happen behind the scenes that you don't really know about. So not only was that a bold claim, but then double down and saying that you were just trying to educate people on this whole topic kind of just came off as disingenuous. It's also pretty telling that this person is soaking up all the clout he's getting because he said he didn't want to take the post down so people could see him realizing his mistake after so many people were saying, hey, this was not really that cool. But nobody's taken it like that. And based off of the quote retweets, it's pretty obvious that this was very clownish behavior. Now, while you're free to have your own opinion on the situation, it does feel a little odd to say things like, this is the proper way to do something just because you think one medium of VTubing is better than the other. And it's unfortunate because he had a really good point in that 3D VTubing is incredibly underutilized in the VTubing scene. Like you can accomplish a lot in 3D with very little money if you understand what you're doing. But that advice was just watered down the moment you say something that sounds very gatekeepy and then do like a humble brag about how you're not rich but you can afford $1,500 worth of equipment. And then you don't even give advice or tips for people who could try to do less money or even for free. Like if you're going to try to educate people on a topic, then maybe start with that instead of saying like, hey guys, look at me doing this cool thing that's so much better because I don't have to spend a lot of money, which again, $1,500 is a lot of money for people. 
Like if I wanted to have a concert with this model, does that mean I'm not doing it properly? Like I didn't realize that there was a proper way to VTube. You know, I feel really bad for Daka because he made a tweet talking about how hurt he felt from everyone just making fun of him and how he's trying so hard to overcome all this bullying. He's been made fun of, you know, slandered saying he was lip syncing during the event and even received death threats over him just trying to do something nice for his audience. Like, it's all fun and games until someone either graduates or does something even worse, like, you know, hurt themselves or something. And cyberbullying really is a huge problem in the real world. I think a lot of people have forgotten that everyone starts somewhere, and unfortunately, so many of us are desensitized by seeing these big budget productions all the time that we expect everyone to have to have this kind of standard. And a lot of people forget that regardless if you're in an agency or not, you still have to do a lot of things yourself and use whatever resources you have available to you to make it entertaining content for your audience. And honestly, he did a pretty good job putting this video together as a special gift to his fans, which is a lot more than what other VTubers are doing. You know, just tweeting all day on Twitter. And as you can tell, his fans are really happy for him to be able to make something like this because the whole point of supporting your Oshi is watching them grow and achieve their dreams and you being a part of that journey with them. Remember back in the day when people made fun of weebs and cosplayers for doing cringe shit like this? <laughs> The witch. Things were a simpler time back then, and yeah, that stuff was goofy. And it's still goofy now, but at the same time, these people that are going to these conventions are just trying to have fun with each other and have a good time because they all enjoy that same hobby. But like, of course, if you're not into VTubers or all you watch is Hololive, then it makes sense that you wouldn't get it because you're not the target audience. Like, I have no interest in football or anything sports related because that kind of entertainment is just not for me. But you don't see me canceling and making fun of every NFL event just because Tom Brady isn't in the finals or something. I don't know. I, I don't really know anything about sports, but you can see that my point still stands. I think a lot of people just want to hate on something because they just want to have a reason to be validated by some random stranger on the internet and they don't mind doing it as long as they get some positive attention from it. But the moment it gets any sort of negative attention or criticism on them, they start to backpedal and say something like, oh, it was just a joke or I didn't mean it or I don't know. When we all know you knew what you were doing. And you know what? I notice everyone is making fun of how limited his model movements are, but this dude can move more than my model. I mean, look at me. I can't even turn my head left and right that well. At least this guy knows how to configure his VTube studio application and do like this swingy motion and stuff. I'm lucky if my program will even track my mouth correctly. But seriously, this brought on an even more important discussion. Why don't we have bouncy, moving, like fluid male VTubers? I saw someone bring this up about how they were wondering if having fluid movement for male models is like too feminine or something. And it brought up an interesting discussion about the differences in animation for males versus females in the VTubing scene. I do think that some of the memes are kind of funny in the sense that live 2D models do actually move in really silly ways because we're 2D and the technology behind animated 2D model is way different than the technology of moving a 3D model. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Now, on a more positive note that came from all of this is that Daka is going to continue to hold concerts and make song covers for his fans and he is the first VTuber who has broken into the mass public on the internet through his music, which means a a lot of new eyeballs have heard him singing. People who have never heard of VTubing before, or maybe have but just never heard of him, might actually start liking him and just VTubers in general because they've been exposed to him in the entire VTubing scene. And I think that's wonderful that a bunch of new people found their brand new Oshi. That's really wholesome. I predicted last year that 2023 would be the year that VTubing becomes less niche and we're all going to get a lot more recognition with each passing day. And I also predicted that VTubers are going to move more into the traditional side of content creation. I'm really looking forward to seeing Daka continue to grow and how much the VTubing scene is going to continue changing from your classic idol VTuber to your everyday faceless content creator or, you know, these spectacle type of VTubers. Like, when are we gonna have the Mr. Beast version of a VTuber? All right, and that's all I really wanted to talk about. Thanks so much for joining me here in the void. Yeah, that's the name for this series now. And let me know what you thought about this whole situation. I hope you have a good night and thanks for watching. Bye.